Spartan Nation. SMD Law is the official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Check them out on the interwebs at smdalaw.com or at 866-529-3537. No matter where you are in the state of Michigan, Upper Peninsula, Lower Peninsula, it doesn't matter. They have an office near you. So whether you need to send a letter to an annoying neighbor, or you're a criminal and you need defense, maybe you just have problems with elder law. Check them out, smdalaw.com today. The official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Call them first, then you act. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back, Spartan Nation. We are so proud to bring in the Grand Poobah of SMD Law, the official law firm of Spartan Nation. As you may have noticed, all of your daily Spartan Nation emails brought to you by SMD Law each and every day, bringing you the top headlines around the Spartan Nation, and we appreciate them, and we appreciate you. We now bring in the man, the legend of SMD Law, Jeff Michalowski. Remember, when your next decision matters, you call them first, and then you act. 866-529-3537 or smdalaw.com on the internet. How you doing, Jeff? Great. How about those Spartans, Hondo? Isn't that amazing? Uh, it's, it's one of the best runs I've seen since probably the, uh, what was it, the 99 team, right? Absolutely. Just phenomenal. What a job of coaching by Izzo. Yep, great job coaching. I think they... The neat thing I like about it, it's totally a team effort. It isn't one superstar. It isn't a one and done. It's a team effort. They're playing cohesively. They're going deep into the bench. This is, it's just great to see. It's Teamwork really does make the dream work, huh? I agree 100%. Jeff, we got some basketball questions for you to, this week. We got others as well, but a couple of really good ones, so I wanted to move them to the forefront because it's basketball Final Four time. Is that okay? All right, fire away. First one comes to us from Brent in Traverse City. Brent says, Hondo, I love to attend basketball games, and they always make an announcement that you are expected to treat the referees, visiting fans, and others with respect, no foul language, or you can be kicked out of the arena. Here's my question. I love getting seats behind the bench when the is zone's not in town. And I can assure you, based on F-bombs and other things, that the language used by the coaches towards the refs is not within those rules. So can they <laughs> kick out a fan for doing what coaches do? Absolutely. Uh, when you buy a ticket, it's actually a license to be at the facility based on the facility's own rules and um, standard regulations. So when, when you have that license, that license can be revoked at any time. So you're basically a guest at their house, and you have to follow their rules. Remember, you're a fan. You're not part of the game. You're watching the game. All right, the next one I thought was really good. Hondo, I think like most Americans with a brain, <clears throat> I was disgusted at the people on the media's reaction to Tom Mizzo yelling at Aaron Henry. I didn't think he did anything wrong. I was fine with it. However, we had an interesting discussion at work, and I told him that I would email you and ask you to ask the attorney from Sterling Heights. Quick question. Can a boss yell at an employee like that? And if so, one of the people at my job said if one of our bosses did that, the company could get sued. I don't think Izzo did anything wrong. I'm not saying that he did. But is that something where Aaron Henry could have really sued him? No, um, it's a little bit different relationship between an employment relationship and a coach-player relationship. Um, I think part of it has to do what is your expectation as to that certain you know environment. Certainly, it would be inappropriate for a boss to yell at an employee like that. Does it happen? Absolutely. Does a boss get reprimanded? Hopefully. Um, sometimes, do employees leave? Yep. Um, you know, would it be language in the workplace that, that involved um, discriminatory language or um, be completely off base resulting in a lawsuit? I don't know. I have no idea what was said. I'm sure the front row sitting fan could tell us what was said, though. I'm sure anybody across the floor could tell us what was said at that one. Uh, but, you know, again, does the media really have an issue with Tom Izzo? No. What does the media really want to do? It's... It was something that was noticeable, something that was inflammatory, or something that really gets stories read. And build headlines click. Good old clickbait, right, Hondo? It seems that's what all reporting is about. How many clicks can they get nowadays on that story? Unfortunately, Jeff, you're a lot right, and I don't think Izzo did anything wrong either. 
You're listening to the Spartan Nation Radio Network. We're joined by the Grand Poobah of SMD Law, Jeff Michalowski. When your next decision matters, you call them first and then you act. 866-529-3537, smdalaw.com on the internet. Jeff, the next one comes to us from Bryce. Um, and Bryce lives in Milan, Michigan. And uh, this is a real interesting one. Bryce says, Hondo, I am going through a separation, and it's not from a marriage separation. I let my cousin move into my house because I wanted to help him. It was nice. He had two children. His wife had passed away, and I wanted to do everything I could and to be able to help. The problem is he began to take what I wanted to do to help for granted. All of a sudden, he quit working as much. He lost his job. He quit contributing to bills. And now I'm ending up paying for everything, and I really am in a disaster. Unfortunately, trying to help family doesn't work when family isn't interested in helping you. Now I need to get rid of him and get him out of my house. I feel bad about him and his two kids, but it's been three years. It's enough time for him to recover from his wife's death and either be contributing or move on. How do I do this? Because he's informed me that since he lives there, I can't be kicked. He can't be kicked out. Uh, from the files of no good deed goes unpunished, huh, Hondo? Yep. Well, unfortunately, you did create what's called a month-to-month tenancy, where now your cousin and his kids are tenants at your house. Absent a written lease agreement in the state of Michigan, you have to actually uh, end that month-to-month tenancy by evicting him. Um, this can be done at a district court. Uh, the court has the papers. Generally, almost every district court will have the papers at the front desk with a uh, checklist that explains what to do and how to file them. So, unfortunately, if he's going to be stubborn about it, uh, you may have to go to court uh, and try and evict him through the district court process. Hmm. All right. Next one comes to us from Andy. Andy lives... Um. In Brighton, Michigan, Andy says, Hondo, quick question. My daughter tried out for a traveling cheerleading team. The person who made the decision and is the coach of the team informed us that our daughter was good enough to have made the team. However, they had to pick another girl because her father was financially supporting the team's travel. To me, this doesn't seem correct. I don't want to be that dad that sues, but the teach, but the coach admitted to me my daughter was better. I don't know what to do. It's frustrating. I would never thought I would sue in a million years for my kids in sports, but when they admit my child was better, I almost feel like I don't have a choice. Any word of advice from Jeff? Well, one, I wouldn't sue. Unfortunately, this is the way the world works. Um, with with a private club or private team, they have every right to make a decision based off of, uh, I guess, the non, non-field uh, factors or non-on-the-field factors. So if being a private club, a private organization, and having somebody that's going to back it, sometimes that's more important than putting a better uh, performer on the field. Hmm. And the last one, actually, I'd like to get two more in if we can, if, if you don't have a problem with it. Um comes to us and before i get to the next email i want to read a kind of a testimony hondo last week you read my email on the radio show about my daughter who had saved money for a full bred puppy i wanted to just send a note to mr michalowski i sent the link of the podcast when it went up to the person who sold us the dog and said to them really you're going to do this to my daughter after listening to the podcast he he agreed that he would give her as long as she paid for the papers which is $75, he would give her a puppy from the next litter. Thanks a lot to Mr. Michalowski. Just addressing it on the radio show got that person to take care of our daughter. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I know it was last week. I don't remember that. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. And, and it was kind of tucking at the heartstrings. But uh, I think I said basically if the breeder had reason to know or should have known that that puppy was part of maybe a strand that had some genetic issues, and I think the puppy died after about three months of having it, Hondo. Mm-hmm. Um, then maybe there'd be something there. But I said, more importantly, talk to the breeder and just see what could be done. So, so that's, you know what? That is probably the best thing I've heard all week. That is awesome. 
All right. Well, you helped because they sent your comments to the breeder. Okay, the last one comes to us is very interesting. It's from Nikolai. Nikolai um, lives in Saginaw, Michigan. Dear Mr. Carpenter, my name is Nikolai, and I am looking for a family to adopt me. I think that I found one, and it's very expensive to adopt. I wanted to know, can I make an agreement with them? And I know I'm only eight years old, but I want to be a doctor. That if they will borrow the money to adopt me, that I promise I will pay them back when I'm rich. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, um, two things going against you. As a minor, you're under what's called a legal disability, which means that you don't have the power to enter into a um, into a contract. Um, therefore, the contract wouldn't be enforceable. If anything, it would be what we call voidable, meaning you can walk away from it when you're 18 anyway. But let's hope that the family that wants to adopt you, Nikolai, is doing it for the right reasons and are not financially motivated. Um, there are other organizations out there that help um, – with the adoption process. Um, one of our family attorneys actually has uh, connections with an organization outside of the city of Detroit. Um, and I'm sure an area like Saginaw will have the same type of non-for-profit or charitable um, means to help assist with the adoption costs. There you go, Nikolai. And we're all going to pray and agree that things come together and you get a family. You sound like an amazing young man. His name is Jeff Michalowski. He's the Grand Poobah of SMD Law. Find him on the internet, smdalaw.com, 866-529-3537. When your next decision matters, you call them first, and then you act. Call them first, and then you act.